okay these are about resolutions the, what is the how does it scan earlier scanning was in spectral it used to be split up here here yeah. this it gets split up the beam that visible spectrum is split up into various bands of blue green red and all that and uh, it used to scan across track scanning of course it has its problems we will not go into the this is what is called spatial resolution how does it uh, how do you say the instantaneous instantaneous field of view is this angle right and in terms of the you know size of the pixel how do you get the size can you tell me this d i want h is the flying height and uh, beta is given uh, beta is the angle h into beta that is how it is so spatial resolution depends upon the height at which from which it is seeing plus the angle bit that's it. if these two are known then you can find the spatial resolution it has some uh, problems with the uh, you know uh, what is the resolution in case of a photography resolution spatial resolution is only in terms of in uh, for the digital images because pixel wise it comes but in case of photography there is no pixels it is all in one go we get so it depends upon in 1 mm how many black and white lines you can you can see the same thing is getting repeated the center so under a microscope you see them and in 1 mm how many black and whites you can discriminate that gives the resolution of the photography and the scale of the photography is known that gives uh, divided by this will give you approximately what is uh, almost equal to parallel to the pixel size or the resolution but it's not it is a different type there are some problems because of the scanning you know the every pixel size may not remain same so and it creates its own problems i don't and that is how what is supposed to be on the left side it looks like this because of these problems anyway that is all details how it can be corrected and these are the things that it can have even the plane that can have so to avoid these uh, you know distortions finally now it is a ccd technology is the irs uh, irs have been adapting landsat and uh, landsat had uh, that but uh, the later satellites all that is every ccd detector detects one pixel the radiance from one pixel or reflected energy from one pixel so each what is the problem here it is good at least it need not travel right it need not uh, move but problem is you should be able to calibrate every detector and thousands of detectors 700 7000 like that depending upon the spatial resolution and the total ground width that you want to cover in one you know travel so that depends on that so you can see all the all of them have to be calibrated and some of them may be behave whereas in the scanning no only thing is when it gives a problem so this present day technology is mainly on ccds charged coupled device okay some of these resolutions that i have given is about uh, for the landsat for spectral resolution spatial resolution and of course radiometric temporal that you can calculate but what uh, probably i have not given is our uh, indian irs 1b 1c 1d now it is resources sat and carto sat resources sat gives up to 5 meters and uh, carto sat gives up to that is the latest that india has achieved and of course there are view and all that which can give you even in terms of you can see 4 meters and 1 meter and that comes to even 0.65 with one of the satellites that is the order that we have gone into what is a satellite it's something that uh, you know lands are these are supposed to be the satellites from the very first beginning that have been what are their orbits their orbits something look like this why are they so earth is moving and it has slight inclination also it's not that it is coming down polar satellite orbits okay earth synchronous orbits are communication satellites because they are almost synchronous with the rotation of the earth this polar orbiting satellites it doesn't come like this it comes with a slight inclination 
and then coupled with that earth movement when you trace their paths they become little of this type so so these are the various bands that uh, you know tm landsat 4 tm has that sensor has these many bands each has been useful for a particular thing can we discriminate snow and cloud both of them how do they look like in terms of energy when it comes both will be whitish or whitish so how do we discriminate them whether it is a snow or shadow shadow may be difficult huh? reflect but how both look almost white so how do we so this mid infrared of 1.55 to 1.75 this can differentiate snow from clouds okay snow has low reflectance clouds have high reflect this is the only band which can discriminate between the clouds and snow no other way that you can find out that is how some of the bands are good for something vegetation infrared like that you can decide depending upon the spectral reflectance curves that we have seen if you have those curves studied carefully you should be able to say that so how do we process these data digital in uh, in terms of visual or uh, with stereoscope we have seen say can we process of course this has to be processed digitally only there is no uh, manually it is almost impossible so there are various facets of digital image processing rectification and resolution re uh, restoration image enhancement image classification data merging and gis integration biophysical modeling it is not an exhaustive list or what it compartments some of them are listed and sometimes some of them get merged with some other thing or maybe further classified it all depends upon what is image rectification and restoration one is geometry correction radiometric correction and noise removal how do you determine the geometry correction what you have scanned how does it relate with respect to the ground otherwise how do you interpret how do you use the maps that is geometric correction and radiometric correction is atmosphere may not be same you know in winter and summer does the inclination of the sun does the you know distance to the sun will it remain same in all seasons yes or no so then that have to be taken into account otherwise how do you normalize this radiation what gives as more energy that reflectance coming but uh, maybe because of uh, other factors also so unless that we take care of corrections that becomes radiometric correction and then finally noise removal so many the other pixels may be contributing atmospheric reflectance may be contributing so it is all that if you want to if you can remove then only you can give a better interpretation something like this you know it may have the real pixel ground pixel may be given by the three four pixels because exactly where it may not start so you should be able to do this geometric correction or based on nearest neighborhood or you know higher order equation that whatever you feel more involvement of mathematical things then it is up to you so you should be able to get to the thing and it is something like this the satellite is at one place the sun's altitude keeps changing and even the distance this has to be corrected before we proceed for because finally the reflectance variation you will see and interpret yes or no so unless those things are corrected it would be it would not be correct to say that so what is enhancement is a contrast manipulation gray level thresholding level slicing contrast stretching spatial feature manipulation spatial filtering edge enhancement multi image manipulation band ratioing principal components vegetation indexes plenty you can what exactly does image enhancement is image enhancement necessary for image classification i am not showing you to you know frighten you no it's only some of these terms i thought okay so let us not discuss every one of them but then let us know is image enhancement needed the previous image rectification and restoration is a must step before we go for classification i finally what we want is image classification yes or no so that how do we get before that rectification because i should know what area i am referring to and then 
so there is image enhancement is not a, a necessary step what is required is uh, enhancement is only for visual application not for digital application if you want to see if there is no contrast in the image then it would be difficult to discriminate between different classes so we do enhancement for visual application not for digital so it can be gray level thresholding a level slicing and contrast stretching and of course many uh, manipulations of spatial filtering edge enhancement multi image manipulation ratioing principal components vegetation indices all these things comes into what exactly means by this suppose if the gray level values are only within this range okay gray level values are only within this range it may be difficult to discriminate between two classes because they are very close there is no much of a difference in terms of its radiance values yes or no so if i can but i have the wide band spectrum i can divide into you know 0 to 255 whereas this has occupied only hardly from how much 100 to 159 so if i can redistribute them so that this contrast gets better so that i can discriminate the classes that is what it is so that is various linear stretch histogram stretch non linear stretch there are many methods let us not get into the details but this is what essentially done and is only for visual when you want to do classification digital classification you use the original data not the not the enhanced data enhanced data not to be is only for for us to say okay whether well, can i discriminate between these two classes so that is what is mainly the and of course finally the class and uh, the previous ones if you want to have an idea about this is level slicing you know just i want water and land that's it you slice into two that's it that is how you can improve and in land then again you come back to the discrimination contrast stretching stretch the uh, uh, the spatial filtering some filtering methods help because this is not the lecture on digital processing so i am only just touching under this because this only one lecture i should cover the fundamentals as well as the digital processing and uh, the sometimes uh, the filtering and edge enhancement will improve multi image manipulation band ratioing suppose there is a vegetation on the uh, side which it is looking towards the sun as well as the other side of a hill will it emit the same type of radiance hmm? will it emit the same radiance at the detector one is on this hill slope which is facing the sun the other one is on the leave uh, other side of the hill which is not facing the sun and the same type of species or vegetation is available which one there won't be so and then but can we classify as a different feature are we right we are not right so this band ratioing helps if you ratio between two bands visible and infrared the ratios ratioed values will remain same irrespective of these effect of this topography can be removed and that is how band ratioing helps okay and of course principal components is data compression most of the thing they are correlated you know the correlation is very high then you can reduce the data content by principal components and then vegetation is near infrared to red, uh, you know red to near infrared and all that these vegetation gets enhanced in this ratioing of vegetation index is also a ratio so some for particular purposes these are being used okay finally our interest is in classification because either visual interpretation or digital classification so if we have a we can have supervised unsupervised and then hybrid classification and finally how do we assess the accuracy of course there are even other methods like artificial neural networks nowadays and uh, these methods are available but basically the standard methods had been supervised and unsupervised for quite a long time artificial neural networks have come in now so what is it supervised classification supervised classification means unless i know this area pawa area there is water body nearby there is vegetation nearby and of course there 
other features. If you have some pixels which you know them as water, vegetation and other features, that will be given as an input. Those features with similar radiance value should be identified as a class of water. If you have 100% ground truth, no need for classification. Yes or no? Can you have 100% ground truth? Then there is no need for classification. So you have, but is, can we reduce? Yes. With increasing, uh, you know, type of spectral, spatial and all that, you can reduce, but you can't eliminate the ground truth. Okay. So you take them, that is what is suppressed classification. So its uh, radiance values mean, okay, variance, covariance matrix, all that you have to extract and then process the whole data and look for these things so that that areas are marked as that particular class. That is what is supervised. It can be minimum distance to mean, parallel pipe, as Gaussian, we will see. Unsupervised classification is K means ISO data. Unsupervised means I don't have any idea about this type, this area. But still I would like to classify. Okay. So that is what is unsupervised. How do you do? You, you classify into some clusters be, because of the radiant similarities. And then later you have to identify what the cluster means. It is post classification visit to the site is required. Whereas this collection and supervised is a pre-classification exercise. It depends upon if you have that, that is supervised. If you don't have, you say that these are different clusters that I could identify and then go back to the site and see what that cluster represents and then give the title for that. Okay. So that is what is uh, the thing. And hybrid classification, a combination of these two and uh, the classification accuracy can be assessed always. So these are the various types of, uh, you know, particular uh, feature and in every band, what are those values, you know, reflectance values that we get, all digital numbers. Now, uh, the reflectance values are converted to digital numbers. So these are the various layers that we have, same uh, pixel can have different values in various bands. And finally, how do you classify? The various types of classification is, suppose say you have these, you know, you have plotted Ba only one band data, band 4 and their reflectance values in terms of digital numbers. Reflectance values can be converted into digital numbers and vice versa. Okay? And uh, if you see, these are all urban and uh, you know, uh, that uh, different uh, thing, forest, water, like that. A pixel which is at place 1, in which class does it go? For these different methods are used whether it is, uh, you know, supervised that uh, parallel pipe, minimum distance to mean, or the statistically, the maximum likelihood classification, all these methods. So how does it, how do you, what do you think that pixel 1 should go? Pixel at place 1 should go to which class? Hmm? Class C, is it? So nearest uh, 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 minimum distance to mean, it should go to class C. Yes or no? But if you take the distribution into account, where it is going? This is parallel pipe. Because you have seen the distribution. If it take into the step distribution, then where it is going? It may keep changing. And finally, when we go to maximum likelihood, where does it go? Distribution is according to the distribution we draw that. Yes, that is what is maximum likelihood. So you can see there are various methods for the supervised classification. Okay, these are some of the methods. And in unsupervised, you don't know. These are all how they are represented. Uh, you know, how each class, sometimes it may be a combined class. This, if you draw these things, it gives you discrimination between class to class. That is, and uh, the spectral radiance that plots also give you which classes are getting overlapped, which classes are independently can be seen. Okay, and uh, how do you say this, uh, you know, what is the classification accuracy finally that you are giving? 
see you have to know some supervised only that can be done otherwise unsupervised you can't do unless again you collect something so what we do you take these are all the ground truths these 233 pixels at the column 1 w these are ground truths and what have been classified as rows you please see now an area with these pixels as ground truth have been classified and the classification that pixels under that class have been given in the last row can you see this these are the ground truth pixels at the bottom these are the classified pixels now if you see the producer's accuracy is 226 by 233 is 97% and the user's accuracy 226 by 239 is user's accuracy and overall accuracy based on the diagonal terms because the same the pixel should belong to that particular class that is given by a diagonal so that is called overall accuracy so what is producer's accuracy and what is user's accuracy producer's accuracy is how many pixels that I have as a ground truth uh, the fellow who uses map will never know will he ever know so to satisfy myself what I have taken and how it is giving that is given by producer's accuracy getting I know so I can do producer's accuracy as a producer of the map I should know how good is my map ok whereas I am as a user you as a user the map that is produced by me if you check you check the ground truth as well as that what is produced only 239 pixels are classified but actual water is only 226 so your accuracy in terms of what you can expect from that map is called user's accuracy only the fellow who produces can have the producer accuracy to satisfy himself how good is the map that he has produced but the users are the judges finally to say in terms of their usage what is the accuracy that is overall accuracy is in terms of this these are called you know the matrix error matrix are also called, termed as confusion matrix various applications of remote sensing can be land use land cover geological and soil mapping agricultural applications Okay, rangeland, forestry, urban, wetland, wildlife, archaeological, environmental, oil exploration, mineral exploration, many, it is not the end of the list, not an exhaustive list, there can be many more. Okay, everything under the sun is supposed to be possible, but everything has its limitation. If it is land use, you know, USGS classification of land use, residential, urban, in that, sub, uh, you know, level 2 classification, various, that you can see. And even level 3, 4, you can have your own. This is the type, depends upon the spatial resolution that you have that you can classify. Right? And uh, let us uh, say, because as we are water resource engineers, I mean, that is the purpose of this course. So let me confine myself instead of other applications that what we are going to talk tomorrow. So let us have how remote sensing can be useful. Can it give the type of drainage? Yes or no? And the type of drainage should be able to say what type of, uh, you know, the area that I have, whether it's dendritic or uh, the parallel structurally controlled drainage. Yes or no? Possible? So based on that, I know whether the runoff is more or the infiltration is more. Yes or no? More the drainage? Huh? More the drainage, more the runoff. Less infiltration. Less the drainage? Vice versa. Yes or no? So I should know about the terrain. Then the you know sparse drainage and the drainage being more intense. And the type of the uh, the erosion. You can say different type of the soils that you can see. Depending upon whether it is rectangular cut or a V cut or something. So less cutting means it is of clay, silt, sand, like that. It depends on the type of the... And uh, finally, what we are interested in the water resource environmental management in terms of what we want in water resources. One is a geographic distribution. Yes or no? How are the water resources? Geographically distributed. Then the quantity. Yes? Quality groundwater locations if possible 
Finally, any applications, uh, additional water resource applications like uh, what? Flood forecasting, disaster management, right? There can be many other applications. All these are meant for what? Can we do with that? Geographic distribution definitely we can do. Yes or no? Because you can identify. In black and white, it looks little blackish, the water. In infrared, it becomes absolutely black because there is no... Everything gets absorbed in infrared. So that is how when you talk about uh, improving, uh, what is it, noise removal, you can say the in infrared, if it has some value, radiance value, that can be because of the noise. The simplest algorithm for water uh, noise removal is that value to be deducted and deduct that much in everything. So more or less, that is the simplest algorithm for noise removal. So quantity, quantity is a problem. If you have, yes, the spread of the reservoir based on area elevation curves while surveying for the reservoir. Yes, we remember, na? Area elevation volume. Yes or no? Yes. So once you know the spread, provided no siltation takes place. Otherwise, you have to conduct what? Sounding. So that the depth well still remains there or not at that point. So that you can update these area elevation volume curves. Yes or no? So based on that, you should be able to say about quantity in terms of the reservoir storage and all that. Okay? And then about quality. Quality again, it can be whether it is inorganic turbidity, whether it is biological turbidity in terms of algal concentration, or it could be oil slicks, yes or no. And of course, there can be others like BOD, COD and all that. Is it possible to detect everything? Yes, turbidity can be detected in that nephron, that uh, me, uh, units, turbidity units. Because more the turbidity, what is the reflectance? Finally, only reflectance. More the turbidity, less reflectance? It is either that or this. But you see, more the turbidity, more reflectance. You can see in band 4, even in these satellite images, that is how which is near the coast will have more reflectance. If you go deep, that becomes black. So that is turbidity. What about biological turbidity? Algal. More the alga, algae? Of course, beyond certain point it may get saturated because the detector itself cannot detect. But it has to increase. More the alga, algae, more the because the reflectance, in, um, particularly infrared. Okay? And about uh, what is the third one? We said oil slicks. How does it? More the oil slick thickness. What? More reflectance? Yes, more reflectance. So you should be able to estimate the IELTS like even thickness for that. Where do we have? And of course, is BOD, COD can be detected? Yes. Ultimately, that is what environmental engineer wants. Our scientist wants. Yes or no? So, whether it can be detected? Huh? BOD, COD cannot be detected directly, but instead, you know, indirectly, suppose you can spot the fish which are surviving. So, it is an indirect indication that it can give. That's biophysical modeling and all that. So, you can talk, say, yes, it can. But otherwise, directly, as long as the signal is not affected in terms of absorption, transmission, and reflectance, nothing. So, if reflectance is more or less, you can detect. But otherwise, you can. And the BOD, CBOD values, unless they turn into turbidity, cannot be detected because it is dissolved oxygen. There could be slight, but that is not met. So, that is how we can talk about quality. Okay? We have talked about distribution, quantity, quality, and the groundwater location. Can it be detected? Can, can it go below the ground? Huh? Microwave also, it is only not much, few I mean. huh? Vegetation, yes, indirectly, particular type of vegetation is there and particular type of drainage structures based on that indirectly we can talk about groundwater location. 
and additional the flood particularly with the microwave that is being coming it it ref, uh, it penetrates through all weather satellites so you should be able to even talk about the cloud indexing and then taking what can be the potential rainfall that's possible that is what uh, they you know do but uh, that is all it everything and of course post uh, flood you can see the extent of damage that very easily and the disaster management uh, you know management techniques of how to give, give the relief for the people even before uh, you know you can plan and the post uh, flood or anything so there are many additional applications that we can talk about and if we say that you can see how these clay soil and silty soil with respect to the intensity from clear water how they are different that is how the turbidity can be detected okay and uh, the algal concentration with respect to the you know clear water you can see how these reflectance curves keep changing with respect to that and you can see the plumes ah dermal that is another important things you see what happens most of these uh, you know things are discharged in the night because others cannot see but you can always have remote sensing and can see dermal particularly these reactors you see you can see what is the temperature you can see the clear difference between the black and white yes or no so that you should be able to get to the temperature difference aquatic life is being attacked finally my friends i think i am just you know we started little late so but still i thought you know other person should not wait picture is worth thousand words yes or no because pictures concisely uh, you know convey information about position size and relationship between the objects the basic advantage of these images is what one is vantage point it is from a height yes or no then it is a permanent recording stop action that is what you can see when pt usha though she must have retired from competitive athletics but we can see her picture of competing in the international you know fora even today because stop action yes so that possibility is there permanent recording and of course broadened spectral sensitivity what we see is only visible but it can go beyond yes and then of course increase spatial resolution and all that so remote sensing will going to with respect to in addition to the gps and the more these things it is going to play a role but we should know its limitations also it is not that everything is rosy there are limitations so we should be able to utilize and uh, to the best of its capabilities and uh, that is what so vinobha bhave has said that uh, spirituality plus science is sarvoday science minus spirituality is sarvanash and uh, spirituality minus science is suicide so can we club these two things of science and the sustainable management that is what probably would be an ultimate thing you are the best judge to use to what extent to damage to what extent the natural ones probably little more about it we will talk about tomorrow